filtering and automating Outlook. Remember, one of the main goals of productivity software like Outlook 2003 is that of time management. But we can spend an awful lot of time scanning worthless email and manually performing mundane tasks in Outlook. That is, unless we leverage some of the filtering and automation tools that are available to us in this great software package. And now that we're advanced Outlook users, we should really do what those who master their trades do and move to the next level by working smarter and not harder. This is one of my favorite nuggets, and I'm, I'm almost positive you're going to love this one too. In filtering and automating Outlook, we're going to look at four key areas. Filtering with the message rules of Outlook 2003 in the rules and alerts area. We'll look at automatic formatting and how you can do that in Outlook. We'll look at the uh, fantastic advanced tools for handling junk mail in Outlook 2003. And then finally, another automation tool, the Out of Office Assistant. Now, one of the great things about Outlook is that it lets you apply automatic processing to your incoming messages so you can manipulate them, you can control them, you can filter them to accomplish a wide variety of goals. We do this with message rules. And we've got two categories of rules. We've got client-side rules, rules that function within Outlook 2003 once they are actually in the inbox. And we have what are called server-side rules, rules that function on the Exchange server. We'll talk about that in a second. But realize that basically by definition, a message rule just simply determines the actions that Outlook 2003 is going to take for a message that's being sent or a message being received and then you, you apply certain criteria uh, to that using a rule. Now you can do quite a bit of things with message rules. For example, you can store messages in a certain way. You can organize messages uh, to meet needs that you have. You can base this on whoever the sender is or the recipient, or even what's in the subject area of the message. You can flag messages. You can prioritize messages as well based on certain criteria and rules. You can reply to certain messages or forward certain messages. Uh, quite often what you'll do is you'll apply a rule to send a forward or reply to a message and send a copy to a particular individual user account or to an entire distribution list. You can also designate certain custom replies uh, to certain messages that you uh, separate from the rest of the herd. You can also run scripts on certain messages and run programs. And these programs can do a wide variety of things. You can also play certain sounds for certain messages. Uh, you can print out certain messages and again, you can run executables against those messages as well and run third-party utilities. Now realize that you have the ability to create multiple rules that can overlap and you can set precedence with your rules as well. We'll look at that here in a second. But realize that message rules, client-side and server-side rules are not for HTTP-based accounts like Hotmail or Eudora Mail, things like that, Yahoo Mail. These are for Exchange client accounts, POP3 accounts, and IMAP accounts in Outlook 2003. Now, before we go up to the rules and alerts area where all the magic happens, let's talk about the difference between client-side rules and server-side rules. In a nutshell, if you're using an Exchange server account, you can use both, client-side or server-side. But if you're not using an Exchange server account, you can only generate client-side rules. Uh, client-side rules are going to be stored locally on your workstation. You use these client-side rules to manipulate messages that are coming to your local folders. For example, you could use one to move all your messages to a local PSD file rather than one on your Exchange server. For example, everything from Brian Cuban. Now, server-side rules are going to be sitting up on the Exchange server instead of your local computer. And they're generally used to process messages up in the mailbox, uh, in the mailbox store on your Exchange server. So whether you're logged in or not to Exchange, messages come into your mailbox in the Exchange organization is going to be processed by a server-side rule. A good example of that would be the out-of-office assistant that we're going to look at a little bit later on in this nugget. 
Well, as you can see, my view has kind of changed a little bit. I've uh, had to step away and take care of some issues on my Exchange server, put out a couple of fires, not literal fires, but uh, some issues I had to deal with. But I'm back now, ready to talk about message rules. And the area we go to deal with this is up on the tools, on the main menu, tools, rules, and alerts. Now realize you won't be able to open the rules and alerts dialog box if you're working in an Exchange server account, but you're offline. Now I'm online, but I'm but we'll talk about offline and online issues in an upcoming nugget. But keep that in mind. I'm going to select rules and alerts. What I'm going to see here is a real simple dialog box with several simple steps. Now I'm going to choose a new rule, and I'm going to have several templates to choose from. And I'm going to recommend to you that in the beginning you go ahead and start creating some rules from a template which is the default setting and kind of get a feel for this very powerful feature in Outlook 2003 and then you can kind of move on to starting from a blank rule once you kind of have a better feel for it. Now realize with an Exchange server account I can create server side rules which I may create most often and client side rules. If I'm not using an Exchange account all of my rules are going to be on the client side. So the first step is to select a template. And you can see here I've got several options uh, that are built in. I can move messages from a certain someone, a certain user, uh, a certain person, or a distribution list to a specified folder. And they give you an example, uh, move mail from my manager to my high importance folder. Or you can move messages with certain words in the subject to a folder. For example, move mail with project in the subject of my project folder. Now you might be thinking, you know what, this would be a good thing to use for some of that spam I get, but as I'm finding out, I'm sure you are, uh, spammers are getting a lot more clever. They're actually putting just uh, totally bogus words and meaningless words in the subject area to bypass these particular kinds of rules that are set up on servers and clients. So spammers are getting much more clever, so this may not be the best solution to remove spam. Uh, move messages sent to a distribution list to a folder. So if I want to move mail this to a help group or a customer support group, I can create a special folder for that. For example, if I've got uh, maybe messages that are going to a particular distribution list for people that are part of a project, uh, maybe a, a charity event, I can move those to a charity folder. Uh, very important also is to delete, delete a conversation. This is a good way to kind of re, uh, get rid of some of that stuff. And as you know, we get we get email all the time for things like mortgage. You know, nothing wrong with mortgages and, and and Viagra and all those kind of things. But I don't really want a bunch of email every day in my inbox in the morning with messages asking me to you know start an eBay business or get a mortgage or uh, make money you know tons of money overnight those kind of things so I can actually apply a rule to a message that arrives with certain words in the subject if they're there and then delete it altogether I can also flag messages from certain people or distribution lists and with a colored flag of my choice also I have the ability to do things like play a sound when I get a message from someone, I can you know go through my favorite sounds, Homer Simpson or Spock or uh, you know uh, Shrek, and I can have those sounds play for certain individuals. Or I can send an alert to my mobile device. And Outlook 2003 and Exchange Server 2003 are much more supportive of mobile services. So let's let's go ahead and choose an option here. I'm going to choose Move Messages from Someone to a Folder, and then click on the Next button. What condition do you want to check? And you've got several conditions here, you know, from certain people with specific words, uh, ones that are marked as important, sensitivity, certain types of action, just a whole wide variety where your name is in the copy to box. You know, you, maybe you're getting copied or blind copied a bunch of different uh, messages. You want to have all those copies go to a certain folder somewhere. And you can get very specific. You can search for specific words in the body, in the subject, in the header all those types of things. So let's go ahead and choose for this option now with specific words in the subject and we'll clear out this option right here. Notice when I choose this option that down here in the step 2 edit the rule description it gives you some new information now. It says apply this rule after the message arrives with specific words in the subject and then move it to a specified folder. So let's say in my example I want to say the specific words would be anything with the word nugget in it. Anything relating to CBT nuggets or nugget lab or any kind of thing I'm doing with nuggets. Click on add 
and it adds it to the search list. You could add multiple words here. If I wanted to put uh, maybe CBT, that little text ring in there, I could say that nugget as well, and I'll click on OK. So now it says apply this rule after the message arrives with nugget or CBT in the subject and move it to the specified folder. What specified folder? Click on specified. Now we can choose where we want to put this thing. I can put it here in my actual mailbox up on the Exchange server. I can say don't put it in the inbox, let's put it somewhere else. I could create a folder if I wanted to for that. If I don't have one, just click on new and I can say I want to put a CBT nuggets. It's a mail and post items folder. Click on OK and I can stick it right there in my inbox as a separate folder in my inbox. Or if I scroll down, maybe I've got another PST file. Maybe I've got a, another a data management file, PST personal folder called CBT Nuggets with its own calendar and inbox and journal. I could stick it in there instead. So whatever option you want to choose, whatever's uh, the best flexibility and efficient option for you in working with Alex 2003, uh, you can choose that option right here. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Move it to the CBT Nuggets folder. All right, click on Next. Now, as you can see so far, I'm just moving this particular messages to a specified folder, the CBT Nuggets folder, but I mean, check this out. I can do so much more with this message with message rules. Look at this, assign it to the category, and you can see uh, what category. Well, let's click on that and say, you know what? I want to make a category that's called Nuggets. Add that, scroll down, and then there it is, boom. OK, I can do that. I could delete it and delete it permanently. We're not going to do that to these messages, but we can do that to spam. We'll look at that a little bit later. I could also move a copy somewhere else, or I could say, you know what, I want to forward this message. Whenever I get a CBT Nuggets message, let's go ahead and forward this. Click on this option, and I can choose now from my area where I want to uh, forward this message. Let's say I want to forward it to, how about all users in my address list, global address list. How about, let's see. But James Johnston to OK. And then, of course, I can also have my server reply to it, my exchange server reply using a particular message. Or I can say, you know what, let's flag it. Uh, let's go ahead and play a sound. Let's print it. Let's mark it with certain importance. Whenever I get a CBT Nuggets message, we'll go ahead and say the importance is going to be uh, high. OK, so I mean, hopefully you can see here the power of this. And if you're a programmer or you're somebody who deals with code, you can get even more granular and more effective by saying, you know what, I'm going to run a script on every message that comes in here. And you can really create some power with Alex 2003 by running particular scripts or just a custom action. All right, let's go ahead and stick with these options and click on Next. Well, you know what they say, there's an exception to every rule, and of course, you want to have the ability to accept things, not accept, A-C-C, -C, but E-X-C, accept things. So what do I want to accept here in this particular message? Well, let's say this. Let's say I want to go ahead and apply this message rule, except if it has an attachment. Why? Because all of my messages with attachments go to a different folder because I process those differently for security reasons. So if it has an attachment and it's CBT Nuggets, we're going to go ahead and not put that in the CBT Nuggets folder. Good idea? I think so. And again, you have a bunch of different exceptions here. You can just look through this and spend some time looking at the power of this particular program, this rules wizard. Click on Next. Okay, we're almost done. I can go ahead and name this. I'll call this my CBT Nuggets rule. I want to run this rule retroactively on messages that are already in my mailbox. I want to turn the rule on. I want to create this rule on all accounts, not just my uh, Exchange server account, but also my IMAP account as well. I can do that or, do, or not do that. And then let's review the rule, okay? We're going to apply this rule after the message arrives, so that means it's a client-side rule with Nugget or CBT in the subject, assign it to the Nuggets category, mark it as high importance, forward it to James Johnston, and move it to the CBT Nuggets folder, except if it has an attachment. Now, this is one example. You can see the, uh, that your uh, options are almost unlimited here. So make sure you spend some time in the message rules area and really customize this for your organization, for your situation, whether you're on your Exchange account, at your workstation in your office, maybe you're using a laptop that goes from a docking station uh, to your 
home. Maybe you've got a home PC. Uh, maybe you've got a POP3 account. Uh, you can use these message rules to really customize and improve your environment. I'll click on Finish. It tells you this is a client-side rule. It's going to process only when Outlook is running. That's OK. Now we see we've got a rule in here. It's called CBT Nuggets, and it's client only. And you can always come in. You can review this rule by just looking at it and go change rule. And it gives you the ability to edit the rule uh, just like this. Click on Finish. Excellent. Now that was a client side rule. We're going to create a server side rule specifically later on in this nugget when we deal with the out of office assistant, a very cool tool. Let's go back up and do one more quick example. I'm going to go to tools, rules and alerts. I'm going to create a new rule. I want to delete a conversation. Click on next. What are the conditions? With specific words in the subject, and let's say also specific words in the body of the message as well. And you can you can either you can even do this. Deselect this option and this option and choose with specific words in the subject or body. That's a good choice. And then you want to go down to specific words. And this is where you're going to get creative and you really want to kind of look at the kind of spam you're getting, some of the junk email you're getting and words that you don't really want. Let's say like uh, mortgage and realize this is a family show, so I'm going to keep this kind of clean, but you, you realize you, you, there's going to be certain types of content you may want to remove uh, that you're getting maybe to your PC at the office, maybe your home computer, your kids use the computer, and so you want to use certain words as well. Maybe I don't care about getting uh, drugs online, I can add that word, and again, uh, I'm going to keep it clean here, but the, the, the variety of words you could use uh, could be a pretty long list. But let me go ahead and just choose one more, say that I don't need a date tonight because I'm married, so I'll click on Add, and we'll say that. Click on OK. Now, if I click on Next, again, it's going to apply the rule with, with these words in the subject or body, then delete them, click on Next. Now, I can delete it, but I can also say, you know what, let's permanently delete it. Now, if you choose this option, it's going to do that. You can't retrieve the message, and it'll give you a little warning if you choose this checkbox. Be careful here because, you know, uh, time could come by, and maybe if somebody has sent me a message that says, you know, here's the date of the company party or something like that, and you're, you're d deleting that message permanently, or you may, it comes time to actually you want to go get a mortgage, and you forgot about this rule, and it's getting deleted permanently. So be very careful with the permanently delete option. I may just go ahead and delete it, so I have the ability to go ahead and clear out my recycle bin whenever I want to. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. You can create some exceptions here as well. We know that. Click on Next. And then now you've got this specify a name for the rule, and I can just call this clean up and I can run it now retroactively I can turn it on or I can create this rule on all accounts my exchange account and my IMAP account sounds good click on finish and there you go we've got a cleanup rule and a CBT nuggets client only rule beautiful click on OK I'm going to switch gears here for a second, and if you have access to an Exchange server, you're an Exchange admin, realize you do have some spam filtering solutions up on your Exchange server. These options are actually pretty cool, especially if you're using Exchange Server 2003. You go to your organization object, enter the Global Settings folder, and look for the Message Delivery icon, and right-click on there and choose Properties. When you do, you're going to be able to fil uh, filter based on the sender, based on certain connections, the IP address, for example, or you can also uh, certain recipients. If you're sending to certain recipients, you can filter as well. For sender filtering, if you've got somebody who's an obvious spammer, maybe you uh, want to add their domain, you could say asterisk, and then it's at, let's say it's called spamomatic, <laughs> I'm making this up, of course, dot com and click on OK. And so you can go and filter that out. Uh, you can also archive all the filtered messages to a particular folder in the mail root of the Exchange server. You can also say filter messages that have a blank sender. And of course, if it, if it matches spinomatic.com, go ahead and drop the connection immediately. So you have some basic uh, uh, cool features for filtering spam up on your Exchange server. And the newer the version of, of Exchange, uh, the more advanced your options are. All right. Now, in addition to automating the filtering of messages coming into your Outlook 2003 environment with message rules, we can also do some automatic formatting as well. If we go up here to view on our main menu and go to Arrange By, 
and come down here to the current view. You can go and you can go to the customized current view area. We've been here before, but we can automate our formatting. Click on automatic formatting. Now you can create formatting rules for these different views. You can't add anything to this. These are the defaults. This is all you get. You can have automatic formatting rules for unread messages, for unread group headers, for submitted but not sent mail, expired mail, and overdue mail. So for example, if you want your unread messages to have a special font, you could clear all this out, go to the font area and say, you know, I want this to be something like Silphane, it'll show up down here. I want it to be bold, 10 point, click on OK. And you can see that's my unread messages. You can just click on add and it adds that. It's called untitled, but I can go ahead and give it my own formatting rule. Now, these particular uh, options here, you can't add to these, but again, they're very flexible. Each one of these can have its own particular set of uh, formatting rules. So there you go. Now, I kind of gave you a taste of filtering out junk email and spam in a granular fashion by using your own message rules, but realize that Outlook 2003 has its own really beefy feature to kind of handle junk emails. As a matter of fact, you can see here under my mailbox, I've got a junk email folder right there already. How do we leverage the power of the junk email filter? Go up to Tools, go to Options, and you can see under Email, I've got a junk email button. Click on that. And we've got four options that we can choose from. Now, the, the default is to move the most obvious junk email to the junk email folder. And Outlook already has its own predefined filters of what it considers junk email. You could say, you know what, I don't want any automatic filtering, but I'm going to go to my block senders list, and I'm going to go ahead and add someone, like, for example, at spamomatic.com and click on OK. If I go back to options, notice some of the other options are this. The high is where most junk email is caught, but realize if you choose this option, it's very likely that some regular mail, uh, the filtering's not perfect, may be put in the junk email folder. So you'll want to check your junk email folder on a daily basis if you choose this option to see if some regular mail is getting through. The most secure of all junk email options is the safe list only. And basically you create a list of safe senders and safe recipients and you add these to the list. And again, you can also export and import from a text file as well. And if you choose that option, it's only going to use people, user accounts, or domains that are on the safe senders and recipients list to your inbox. And again, this is the most strict of options in junk email. Now you've also got this option to be very careful though. It says permanently delete suspected junk email instead of moving it to the junk email folder. Again, as I mentioned, uh, some stuff could get through if you're choosing this option, so kind of be very careful using this particular selection. Again, this is the junk email and Outlook. It's a basic feature, but it's been really expanded and improved, the filtering techniques uh, from previous versions of Outlook. So you may want to go ahead and use that, at least using the low option by default, so that most obvious junk mail gets into the junk email folder, and then check that on a regular basis built into Outlook 2003. Fantastic feature. One of my all-time favorite handy features of Outlook 2003 is another automation tool called the Out of Office Assistant. Now this component creates a server-side rule that automatically replies to messages when you're gone from the office for you know longer than a normal absence, like a seminar, or maybe a training session somewhere, remote work, or a vacation. Uh, it'll even work when Outlook isn't running or it's offline. Remember though, since this is a server-side rule, it's only available with my Exchange client account, not my IMAP, POP3, or HTTP accounts like Hotmail. However, many web-based email systems are starting to offer these services. I know my Yahoo account did a few months ago. You'll have to use the custom rules and alerts area that I just showed you to handle out-of-the-office scenarios for your IMAP and POP3 accounts. 
Also, your Exchange server is going to remember which addresses have received your out-of-office response, and it'll send subsequent messages to your inbox without generating repetitive responses to that particular sender. That, that would really be frustrating for them to get an out-of-office message every day for two weeks while you're on vacation. In addition, Outlook's going to check to see if the out-of-office assistant is running every time you start up. And if so, it'll prompt you if you want to turn it off. So it's kind of a depressing reminder that your Caribbean vacation is over when you turn it off and you're back to the grind. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at how we run and set up this out-of-office assistant. Okay, make sure you have your inbox selected, then go up to Tools, Out-of-Office Assistant, and you're going to get this little dialog box here. Now, I'm currently in the office, but I'm going to be saying, you know what, I'm getting ready to leave. And I can put my auto reply in here and type this in. I've already uh, got mine typed out. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it in here. And this is what it says. Uh, Michael Shannon has been chosen as a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and will be on vacation in New York City from Wednesday, June 30th to Monday, July 5th. All messages are being forwarded to his administrative assistant, Connie Wong, who will address any urgent matters. Thank you for your patient. So this is the auto respond message that everybody will get uh, at least one time uh, when they send me an email message. Now I can I can add some rules here because you know what I kind of uh, alluded to some rules already like Connie Connie Wong. So let's add a rule. Let's say that first of all what I want to do is I want to copy all the messages to a folder. I set up a folder in my IMAP remote account because I'm going to access my account using IMAP and my laptop. So I have a, a folder called OOO out of office. So I'm going to make a copy of all my messages to go to this OOO folder I can take a look at uh, when I'm gone on my vacation. I don't really want to work, but you know, if something's really urgent and I get a particular call from Connie Wong, I can just go check out that folder using my IMAP account. Of course, as I said, I'm going to forward these messages to, let's go find her account, all users, global address list, Connie Wong, click on to, click on OK. I've got several methods here, a standard method, I could leave the message intact or I could just insert it as an attachment. I'll go ahead and say standard method and then click on uh, OK. Now when I do, I'll get a little dialog box saying this. The rule is going to fire for all incoming messages. Is this what you want? Yes, it is. Realize I could also pick and choose individually who I want to send certain messages to. I have a bunch of out-of-office responses for different types of users, user accounts, distribution lists, things like that. But this is what I want. Click on yes, and here's my rule. It's the all messages one. It sends this auto-reply message. Click on OK. Now, if you go to Tools, Double-check this, I'm currently out of the office. So if I click on OK again and I close down Outlook, notice when I run Outlook again, choose your profile, and then boom, out of office is currently turned on. Do you want to turn it off? So if I'm back in my office, uh, maybe I have won you know, $16,000 on Millionaire and I'm still keeping my job, <laughs> so I'm back in the office, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, click on yes, turn it off, and it, it removes that out of office reply from all the email. I'm going to click on no, because I want to test this out uh, on another account, for example, Brian Cuban. Let's go check that out. Okay, I'm over in Brian Cuban's account, Adler 2003, and if I go, I can see here, uh, as soon as a message was sent from Brian Cuban uh, to Michael Shannon, the uh, out of office reply comes back to Brian, and again, this is in re relation to a rideshare program planning meeting email. And basically, here's my message. Uh, by the way, I'm going on vacation, blah, blah, blah. And of course, I can reply to that. Good luck. Uh, don't use me as a phone a friend. Okay, there you go. Good luck, Michael. Don't use me as a phone a friend. Click on send. And there we go. The out of office assistant's working perfectly. Okay, I've logged back into Michael Shannon, Outlook 2003. I can see here in the OOO folder, 
as I designated in my out of office assistant. I've got this message that is sent back to me from Brian Cuban, also a message, and I could verify this by going and logging on as Connie Wong, but a message has been forwarded to her as well. So the out of office assistant, a fantastic automation feature in Outlook 2003. In this CBT nugget on filtering and automating Outlook, we covered four main objectives. First of all, filtering with message rules in Outlook 2003, the rules and alerts area of the tools menu. We also looked at some filtering on the Exchange server side as well. We looked at automatic formatting and how you can do that in Outlook, uh, the advanced junk mail handler of Outlook 2003, and then finally, very cool feature, the out of office assistant. I hope this CBT nugget's been informative for you. Thanks a lot for viewing. See you in the next movie.